today I have the chance to be with Max Deckers. Hello, Max. Hello, Gloria. So, Max, you have uh, many years of experience in the field of uh, semantics, interoperability, open data, and you have applied this, uh, this expertise, this knowledge that you have built throughout different domains, such as uh, digital cultural heritage, research with fair data in recent years, but also public government. And if I remember well, you, you haven't started uh, in this domain directly. Uh, you have a background in, uh, in chemistry uh, from your studies. But so, Max, what, what made you dedicate your entire career to semantics to semantic interoperability uh, and data exchanges? So, what is it that passionates you so much about this field? Well, well, interesting you say that I started off in chemistry. Uh, not only in chemistry, I also did informatics uh, during my studies. And by coincidence, more or less, I got involved in library automation. And and the interesting thing about that field is is that it's really uh, people focused. It focuses on user services uh, and uh, results for users to have uh, better experiences. And one of the things that was really interesting for me was also that the people that work in that field are very cooperative. People really like to work together to do things and provide better services. And the passion that I have for this field is is basically because it is a very it's people work. Uh, it's Technology is important, it is the basis of some of what we do, but what I have been doing always in my career is bringing people together, people that come in sometimes with different ideas and different uh, needs, uh, and trying to find sort of commonalities between what people are doing and what people are uh, trying to achieve. Uh, and that is something that even also in this uh, arena, in the SEMIC community, is really important that people come together with a willingness to listen to each other, to understand each other, and trying to find ways to do services together that improve uh, services to end users. And I think that for me is an important part of the work, is an important part of what I like to do. Uh, and also it, it's very rewarding if you have a group of people that start off on different uh, dimensions, different ideas, and then bringing them together, and then in the end have a result like some of the specifications that we did in SEMIC, uh, some of the, the pilots that we did, uh, that actually gives people uh, sort of the, the, the feeling that we're achieving something that people will notice. And I think that is, for me, was always an important part of, of the work that I've been doing. So, Max, in your view, based on, on your experience, what are the main achievements uh, that were made in the, the field of semantic interoperability over the past decades? Well, one of the things that has been very important, of course, is the work that has been done by uh, W3C over the years uh, in building semantic technologies. Because in, in a way, uh, about 20 years ago, we didn't have the tools to create semantic interoperability. So I think that's important that we have started doing that based on W3C standards, which also mean it is an international effort. It's not just Europe, it's everywhere can uh, people can work together based on semantic standards. And I think also in the beginning, it was a little bit unclear to people what it meant. Uh, people were mostly uh, very familiar with XML style uh, applications where uh, semantics is important, but it's not explicit. And in the way that it was defined in RDF by W3s, for example, is that it made semantics very explicit and it made it also much easier to combine things. And I think over the last 20 years, uh, that has been a steady development in people's minds. Uh, there is sometimes a little bit of reluctance because it's not easy to understand sometimes, but uh, uh, overall, what we've seen also in the last 10 years at SEMIC is that people really see the benefits of semantic interoperability because people have similar uh, requirements, people have similar types of data, and the way that you can actually bring them together with semantic technologies is something that has been growing. And I think we're not still not there yet. Uh, we're sort of uh, in the middle of that journey. But uh, also the success of SEMIC and of this conference, for example, shows that people really see the benefit. And I think this is one, one thing we can say 
that over the last couple of years has been growing, uh, the community has been growing, the tools have been improving. Uh, so in that sense, we have a better place now than we had 10 or 20 years ago. So it's interesting what you, since you mentioned CEMIC, uh, because CEMIC has been existing for more than 10 years now. And um, it's actually interesting to look from your view, um, what should we foresee, uh, what should CEMIC foresee for the next 10 years? Well, certainly the theme of uh, artificial intelligence is going to be more important uh, for the uh, for the coming years. But but also there is there is still uh, this uh, point that we are working on is that there is technology on one hand, on the other hand there is, let's say, the human understanding uh, of what can be done with the technology at artificial intelligence. It's also very important that we don't throw artificial intelligence at everything. So we need to see what we really want to achieve and how we can use the tools to achieve that. And I think uh, for uh, the future, uh, there is still, uh, on, on one hand, the technology uh, pushes us forward, but there's also a need for stability because people need to build services, uh, especially in the public sector. People have uh, budgets uh, for a couple of years uh, and they need to make sure that what they invest in today will still be valid in two or three years' time. So there needs to be a balance between that stability and the innovation. And I think uh, we've seen that in CEMIC over the last years, that that is an important factor and is going to be an important factor, especially with the additional speed currently with technology. My last question would be, if there is one thing you would like the next generations to remember, um, when working in the field, uh, what would that one thing be? Well, one thing is maybe a little uh, much to ask, but, but I think one of the things that I always uh, liked and also encouraging people is to first be ambitious, uh, look forward and see what the possibilities are in the future and try to, uh, to work on those. But on the other hand, also be realistic. Uh, take things one step at a time. Uh, still keeping the vision for the further future in mind, but then uh, make sure that you take steps that are uh, easy to take and uh, get you to results that you can show to people. So I would uh, advise people to work in that way to achieve the, the, uh, the results that you want uh, in the light of this longer term future vision. Thank you very much.